everybody. We have a few more coming in. My name is Crystal Hopper Myers, and I am the STEAM Pathways Assistant here at SWAP, also our Oregon NASA Space Grant Consortium Prisms Project Coordinator. And um, I'm about to ask uh, Dr. Coiner to come up here. He is over our physics and engineering. He's going to tell you a little bit about Invent Oregon and our guest tonight. So thank you for being here. Well, once again, thank you everybody for coming. Um, as Crystal mentioned, I'm Dr. Eric Pointer. I'm in the physics and engineering department. Um, but for the last few years, we started with it in 2018. A, we, we have been a participating college in the Invent Oregon program. Uh, it has been a very interesting program for a lot of us from the faculty perspective, as well as our student success stories that we've had come through SWAC that have gone through it. Uh, and I was I was glad that we had the chance to have Abigail Van Gelder come in and talk about the program as it stands now. It's kind of it's kind of an ever-growing, kind of ever-changing program, but as it evolves, it makes it more accessible for students at any uh, at any level from community college to community members that are interested in uh, pursuing inventions and pursuing innovations to uh, to have resources and to have access to things and have a chance to uh, pitch their ideas and compete uh, in the open market of ideas uh, for uh, for both for both their own personal edification and for the chance to to move on and maybe create the next the, the next great invention. Uh, part of the reason we're having this this talk today is to introduce the Inventor program. We're also following this event going to kick off what we call our 2023-24 our uh, South Coast Innovation Challenge, which is our essential quarterfinal competition that goes into the Inventor program. Uh, we have the uh, application forms for teams. So as you think about this and you come up with ideas, if you have a team ready and you have an idea, we'll have a link to a to an application form that we will send out to interested students. Uh, probably the first part of next week. I have to tweak the form a little bit because it's not quite uh, it's not quite complete yet. But if you're interested in receiving a form or receiving more information about inventory, make sure you sign the sign the sheet on the table as you came in. Uh, that way you can that way you can get information about the application process and just information about uh, more about the program. I'm sure we'll share more of the more, more of the inventory details as as we go as people are building their ideas and, and coming forward. But I will turn things over to Abigail for further information. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, all right, so yes, I am Abigail Van Gelder. I am the director of the Center for Entrepreneurship at Portland State University. Um, within my role in that, I also get to run Invent Oregon. And there's a million ways I like to start this talk, but you just gave me an easy one. It's access. What Invent Oregon is about is creating access. We try to create confidence and confidence through everything we do. We try to give you a toolkit to start your innovation journey or continue it no matter where you are. Um, we do this through supporting individual schools. We work with uh, a number of institutions across the state to run pitch competitions. That starts off here with you talking to your faculty members, talking to your fellow classmates about what you want to solve. So what is invention, right? The invention scape can be anything. It could be coming up with an app, it can be coming up with a problem, it can be coming up or a solution to a problem. If you've ever woken up one day and seen something that's in your own world, in your own community that you think you can solve, that you think you can work on, you are an innovator, you are an inventor. Um, at Invent Oregon, we try to support you by giving you tools for entrepreneurship and tools for invention. But, whoo, whoa, whoo, sorry. 
threw me off. Um, but invention means a lot of things. Invention means identifying a problem, coming up with a solution, and figuring out who that's going to impact. Um, one of the ways that I do that is I am supported by an amazing group of folks. We have a, an incredible amount of foundations, professional organizations, and community members that support you. So part of being an Invent Organ isn't you are a solo inventor. You are not only partnering with your fellow classmates, you're partnering with faculty members, you're partnering with community members, you have an amazing amount of folks who want you to succeed. So every day, whenever we talk to our mentor and participants, they tell us what roadblocks they're having, tell us where they're struggling, we find someone to help. Vent Oregon is an avenue for you to expand past the network you have today, to be able to continue making progress for whatever your visions and whatever your dreams are for tomorrow. So Invent Oregon is a statewide competition. We work with 21 higher ed institutions across the state. So that includes universities, colleges, and community colleges. And I always say I'm not partial to any school. I don't have a favorite, but to be honest, I am very partial. I'm very partial to all of our community colleges that participate in this program. Let's be honest, you have a much harder time than other schools do. You don't have the resources, you don't have the funding, and you don't have the access a lot of other schools do. Hence, Oregon, everybody is on the level playing field. Everybody gets the same access, the same mentors, and the same amount of support. Um, I am very proud to say that last year, a uh, community college took their place in the overall competition. It's from Umpqua Community College, and that was one of the happiest I've ever been. Um, to see people who have taken an idea, seen a problem, and working to solve it. Slides. So as you can see, we work with schools across the state. Um, there is no region, don't pay any attention to that over there, that doesn't get uh, any support from us. Um, so as you're, as you're working through this, you are invited to network with all of these other schools. You are going to work with folks who are from the Portland Metro, but you're also going to work with folks who are from other rural communities, who understand the challenges that you have, who will understand the unique difficulties that it is working in a rural community. Because let's be honest, it's harder here. There are less things available to you. There is less momentum sometimes. And being able to network and listen to and hear from people who are doing those same kind of struggles uh, is, is what a mentor is all about. Plus, there's so many unique problems. Um, what I deal with on a daily basis in Portland, the challenge you deal with on a daily basis in this part of the state. That's the beauty of it. The innovations that you're looking at are serving people in your own community and globally. Personally, I think the best innovation comes from right in your own backyard. There are inspirations that you've taken from yourself. It's something that you've identified and said, oh, I wish this existed. Oh, I wish I didn't have to do it this way. That's the first step to innovation. That's the first momentum to solving a problem is to say, I see a problem. And it's especially effective whenever you see a problem that affects you personally. Because it's affecting you, it's affecting everybody else in your community. And right there, you have everyone around you to be that support system, to listen to you, to be your first customers, are the people that you're going to class with or are in your community. There are a few rules Inventory. I feel like I skipped a slide. I think I skipped a slide. Let me tell you a little bit about um, uh, the timeline for Invent Oregon. So, as you just found out, applications are going to be open for your own regional qualifier. All 21 institutions that were are in the Invent Oregon network have qualifying competitions. Throughout that, you work with your own college. Uh, you get that support system. You come up with an idea in order to present to Invent Oregon. You compete, two, school, two teams from each college qualify to make it to the Invent Oregon semifinals. Um, the part of that is that we invite those two qualifying teams to join us at Portland State. The only reason we do it at Portland State is because that's where all of my supplies are. Um, so we bring you up to Portland State, you join uh, 22 to 24 other teams at Portland State, and you work for a weekend to go through the basics of like business model prototyping, design thinking, customer ideation, learning a pitch, what is IP, do I qualify for intellectual property rights, uh, how do I get funding to continue this, how do I do all of this, we work with you for three days, it's very intense and it's very awesome. 
but you also gain a network. One thing that people say year after year, the best part about being a mentor, and it isn't the grant funds, there are $2,500 uh, grant checks that we write for you to continue building your prototype and make it into the event target finals. It isn't the mentorship, although the mentorship is amazing. You, uh, each team is paired with a professional mentor from the broader Oregon startup community in order to help guide you. It's not the event Oregon staff. We're there, but we're not there. It's being in the boot camp. It is meeting another hundred other folks who are wanting to work in innovation, who are wanting to invent, who are wanting to problem solve. You will have as a network for the rest of your career. You will be with those people for the rest of your career. You will build that. You will build a professional network outside of that through, hey, I just can't find lab space to work on this. We're gonna make phone calls. We're gonna get you what you need. And you're gonna be able to continue to build that network with yourselves. The qualifying elements for Invent Oregon. So you can work on a product, a process, or a service that affects the community or environment in a positive way. This includes pretty much any industry, but you have to be working on a physical innovation, or your innovation has to have a physical component. So we got a lot of really cool stuff. Last year we had a ton of people who were working on material sciences in fashion. As fashion, as we know, is a huge environmental problem. We have a lot of people who are working on different ways of low water cotton or growing kombucha scobies and making it into fabric. Really awesome stuff. Uh, recyclable skate shoes. Are there any skateboarders in here? You know, that you tear those things up. It is that sometimes they last less than a month. They're working on recyclable skate shoes. You've seen like really silly problems, right? It's easy to laugh, like really floating out of kombucha. But something like that can make a dent in an industry that people don't think about. So we love green tech, we love energy tech, but it's really about making an impact in your community and identifying what that community is. An innovation from a couple years ago was a neuro net device that helped with uh, when you're feeling stressed and anxious, taking finals. It was designed for students. I mean, identify the problems they have on a daily basis with their own classmates and the like. Why don't you write them up with a solution? Best part about a mentor organ, your solution does not have to work. You just have to work on it. Um, some of my favorite projects that have come through the program are things that didn't work. That's part of the invention process, is learning how to do those steps. It's learning how to identify a problem, identify a solution, and understand what the impact is, and moving forward with that. Um, I absolutely love that. Uh, there are a few other requirements this year. One of the things that we are going back to is that each team needs to have two members. Uh, and there's a good reason for that. It is really hard to do this on your own. Any founder, any innovator, any inventor will tell you, you can't do it on your own. Our goal is to save up for success. So from day one, I want you to have a partner in that. Now that doesn't mean that you need to find another engineer or another business student that is your, your exact replica. Have a friend. Maybe you've got somebody who's in a different institution, who you went to high school with, who's also really brilliant and creative, and you want to be on a team together. Maybe you are an absolutely brilliant creative mind, but you just need a little help with your graphic design. That's another team member. Find people who can support you. Those are some of the roles uh, and requirements to be in Inventor again. But why? Why do this? I showed you earlier a slide of all of our funders. These are foundations, institutions from across the country who give us money to put this on. They see value in what you are doing here in Oregon. They understand that there is a unique culture of innovation here. This is out west. This is the land of people who had to figure it out for themselves in order to move forward. There's harsh weather here. There is harsh economic times in this part of the country. And yet, people figure it out. You stay here, they live here, they love here. We have all these people who say, hey, we want to capture that. We want to support you while you're doing that. This is hard. How many people have looked at a problem like, I don't know how to invent. I don't even know the first step. Invent Oregon is a place that you can learn how to do that. We are a resource. We are also a national stage for you. Yes, this is a Oregon competition, but annually we have more than 1,000 people who view our uh, our presentations streaming on 
uh, through our platform, we actually get more people who watch the event Oregon finals than watch MIT's uh, annual competition. <coughs> people want to know what you're doing. They want to see the invention. And a reason for that is that we like to say we are beyond early stage. I want you to have an idea. That's all. You don't need to have a, a fully formed concept, a tested a prototype. I just want you to have an idea. I just want you to have a problem. Come up for it and work through the programming that exists here, work through the programming that exists with us, and keep moving with that. Some of the best projects come to the event org in semifinals, just, just sketches on paper. Nothing more than that, right? It's just starting out, just learning how to do all of this. Um, and if you don't believe me, let me show you what some of the folks that participated last year what they said. <coughs> There's no sound. Oh no. <sighs> Right, best laid plans. It is a plan from my laptop only. Um, is there a speaker? Well, I have this great video <laughs> where students uh, are interviewed and they talk about their experience. But no, we can hear it. Learning, virtual reality, VR, leadership, yes. to create, create clothing and biotechnology. So I would describe the Vent Morgan as basically the future of your tech. So this is my first like physical mechanical device that I've ever uh, designed from the ground up. I came up with a napkin sketch with my uh, buddy Emmett Allen, and we're now here at the finals. We make a space for folks to say they see a problem and they want to solve it. We give a platform to do that, and they come to us with these incredible solutions. You have that whole process of being the engineer, making the product, being the business person, marketing the product, pitching the product. So we just kept drawing and drawing and going back and forth. That was like the fun part at the beginning, um, trying to like think of ideas together. And it's always so hard to find funding for this type of thing. It's very expensive to build a robot, um, even a decent prototype, especially being from a smaller school. Um, myself being from a school background, first year in But we got all the funding we needed uh, with the help of the event organ. Skype and event organ Colleges, universities are represented, anthropology students, business students, students, they understand that they hold a place in innovation. I think event organized for everyone. It's really important to have uh, artists and creatives in STEM fields. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm an engineer and student center with you. Uh, and ironically, for me, it's really easy to make things. Making things is the hard part. I just talked to business professors and say, how do I move forward with this? And it's the same with business students. It, it, it's really easy to pitch an idea, but it's hard to actually create something that's practical. So in my business class, it's like, oh, make a product and sell it. Um, so we don't actually have to make a product. But this is like, all right, we actually have to make a product. Remember, I actually have the authority. have to bring something physical to the table. The competition kicks off with our annual boot camp and semifinals. All the qualifying teams come together. They network, work, to learn, then move on to the final. Grant funds, mentorship, and additional resources make that three month push to build and test and get ready <coughs> to walk on that stage and pitch their ideas. I just keep thinking back to the gym. <laughs> You're in the room for eight hours, and I, I think I took like 25 days of notes because there's so many people with so much information that 
I felt like I've been waiting a lifetime to hear from me and Blue. This is a sprint. If you wonder at certain points whether or not you're going to get everything how you want it, it can be extremely satisfying to be able to put out a book like this. Did Trent think of the community in Kentucky or in Hampton? Do you rely so much on generous funding of the Wilson Foundation, John House Foundation, and the Ward Family Foundation, but also the startup community, our mentors? Super awkward to watch a video where he talks in front of him. So that's just a little bit. That uh, was our, our recap video from um, the finals last year. Uh, and it's a little piece of the impression that people got participating in it. Um, and you can see there's a wide variety of programming uh, or programs that were represented there. In that video alone, there was a fine arts student, um, there was an anthropology student. There was a music and video design student, uh, as well as your traditional like engineering folks. Um, invent Oregon, make a joke about it, but we try to make uh, innovation and invention accessible. Um, so, one of the things that we teach in Invent Oregon is storytelling. And I would like to do a very silly, very fun <laughs> exercise for you guys. Uh, this is just the beginning of storytelling, and I do have to time myself for this. Give me a moment. Well, I would like to present to you a solution that my team has been working on. I want to talk to you about the click pen. We completed a number of surveys at the beginning of the year, uh, and we found out that 75% of college students survey uh, talks about how their pens were coming open in their bags. Um, we also know that there are a million pens sold annually in the United States. Um, our survey information also let us know that 3.4 out of every five college students survey prefer uh, gel pens to ballpoint pens. Um, and USA Today uh, has reported that it's a 40% a decline in the use of pencils since 2020. Uh, the pen market in the US is a $4 billion industry. So we really think that you should uh, look at our solution and go with the click pen next time you are making a buying decision for a writing pencil. So, I've got a question for everybody here. Have you ever been rushing to class? You're late, you've had a rough day, you've got tons of stuff going on, and you're stepping in that classroom, and you've got to take notes, and you've got to get this banged out, 
you open up your bag and you've got your pen and it's gunk and fuzz and gunk all over the end of it. You're writing notes, it's a mess, the end of the cap has fallen off, you open it up, you stick it in your hand, you get it all over your hand, you wipe your face, you got ink on your face, it ruins your day. Well, I want to solve that for you. Uh, my team has been working on a solution for a state-of-the-art writing device. We have come up with a self-enclosed click system that prevents these accidents. We know that this is a completely untapped market. Not only have we designed this to make sure that it protects your bag, your face, keeps you away from those bad days, but it has a custom patented uh, hook system and we've made it extra cushioned. I don't know if you guys know this, but the pen market in the U.S. alone is a $4 billion industry. We are going to change that. We are going to provide you with what you need to make sure that you have a good day. So get that quick pen today and save yourself for tomorrow. The only difference between those two pitches was, I try and do it the same way as the families every time. Is at the beginning of the first pitch, I told you a bunch of facts and figures, right? I told you why we invented the, pen, the click pen, right? It's a problem. Pens come open, people want gel pens. It's a huge industry. It doesn't make you want to get a click pen. The second pitch is, it's three things. I identify a problem. Man, it sucks whenever you have a shitty pen in your bag. Two, I identify a solution. Look at this sleek, self-encased. And three, I talk about the impact. The impact is this will save you time, money, resources, and make sure that you never don't look cool. This is the basics of storytelling. Identify the problem, identify the solution, identify the impact. Easy as that. This is one of the things we teach you in the Invent Oregon Bootcamp, one of many, many things, so that you walk up on that stage, or into a classroom, or into your boss's office, <sighs> into your parents' living room, you can convince them. You learn storytelling, you learn how to put this together, how to take an idea that you have and be able to express it to anyone, no matter who you're talking to. That's one of the things that we work on. We cover a lot of different things through Invent Oregon. Not only do we provide, obviously I want to see everybody here succeed, but there are only two teams from this college that are going to come forward. However, the Invent Oregon system goes way beyond that. We work with faculty members here to provide our Invent Oregon resources to you. Um, if you are in the preliminary competitions, you also have access to any of our resources. And I don't know if you guys know this, but there are members of your community who are watching this today live, who are here in the audience, who are your connection. You're coming forward and you're participating in your semifinal, in your, in your qualifier round. You are getting tapped into that local network. People who, their jobs, their lives, their everything is to make sure you succeed. They build networks of support, and I know in this community in particular, there is an incredible network of support for people who want to innovate, who want to try it, who want to know what it's like, who want to take a step into it. There are people here for you. Um, and it's the faculty members who participate in this and other faculty members that are here to support you. Um, so that's what I want. I want to see everybody join us in 2024. Uh, so, I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I can answer nearly anything about Invent Oregon, or I can pitch it in a way that makes it sound like I do. Uh, is there any, any, any questions that I can answer? What can I share further about Invent Oregon, about the system, about what we cover, what we're about, how we do it? Any questions on the Zoom at home? I'll throw out a question to get, to, to get some of the cards. Um, the years you've been involved, what has been your favorite? What, what has been, in your view, the, the most creative of the of the uh, inventions you've been put forward, and what has been your favorite one? Oh, that's a tough question. What has been the most creative? Um, I, I go back to the first year I was involved with Invent Oregon. Um, there was a team that was trying to come up with an alternative to plastic 3D printer filament. Um, I think it's important because through your prototyping journey, you're going to use a 3D printer. You're going to rip through so much plastic and waste doing that. Uh, and they were working on a solution to say, can we use like seaweed 
to create 3D print fulfillment. Um, I can tell you the best part about the invention is it didn't work. Uh, but they took it all the way to the finals, all the way to the stage, and said, hey, we've we been through all of this and we've not come up with a solution. That's one of my favorite projects. Um, uh, or one of the coolest things that I've seen somebody work on. My favorite project uh, of all time was um, from Rural Community College. Um, there was a gentleman who was working on an exoskeleton. Something really simple, because he was starting to realize that he was losing some hand strength. And he was opening a soda bottle. Uh, something so simple as that. Um, and the technology that he's working on has absolutely incredible use. We have a, a really aging population in this country, right? Who want to be active and have hobbies that have arthritis. Imagine if your elderly relative who loves to tinker on cars can still do that and give themselves that happiness and that joy and keep their brain stimulated because they just put a little device on their hand and it gains their strength. How many people have been injured and it changes their ability to do their jobs and their livelihood. Something as simple as being able to have hand strength can change their lives, keep them doing a job that they love. Um, I think that's really, that's been my favorite one that I've seen so far, yeah. Um, and these are totally different things. Somebody's working with a, with a biodegradable filament and somebody's working on uh, an exoskeleton. It really, really, the variety of projects we get through Invent Oregon is I think that's my favorite part, <laughs> is it's so fast. Um, it, it's so fast. I, I work directly with students in Portland State, and each year we have our own preliminary competition that comes through, and I'm like, oh, nobody's going to get more creative than these, and then boot camp starts, and I'm like, okay, I was wrong. Uh, this is wild uh, every time. It's just incredible. Um, I think it's really cool to see folks of your generation who really care more than a lot of other folks um, that you're looking to solve problems that have a lasting impact for yourselves um, and for young people, uh, younger than you. Um, uh, so many of the projects that came through last year had a really heavy focus on STEM education, making sure that little itty bitty STEAM folks become medium sized STEAM folks that become engineers and trying to come up with solutions that are like, I know this is going to be a nonprofit for the rest of my life, but if this can make provide access and inspiration for somebody after me. Um, I think that's really cool. Um, I see a lot of that from folks your age that are working in innovation, is wanting to make an impact for someone else. Yeah? Do you have any questions about how to like qualifying or what it's like to be? Yes? <laughs> yeah, so each school does it a little bit differently. Uh, uh, here and at Portland State, there's a preliminary competition. Um, uh, each one of these preliminary competitions has its own rules. Um, within that, the top teams from those preliminary competitions who meet the requirements for Invent Oregon would be selected to go to the semifinal boot camp. And then we choose one team from each school, and then there's usually two spots for the form wild cards. So of the additional teams that uh, didn't make it to the first run, we choose the top two to then go on. Yeah. And then to, to add it, I'll, I'll mention the part about our competition. Usually, what I've done before was I've had a, when we had a competition, is I reach out to a group of people in the community that could serve as basically a panel of judges that, that could bring their ideas and push forward to a, to a showcase that we would have at the end of April and then have those, those individuals basically score the uh, score the score the teams and then the top two teams as far as the score goes. When we have when we have multiple teams, we'll we we'll end up going for the yeah, for the Yeah, and our judging for the semifinals works very similarly. We have um, it's a lot of people who serve in our mentor pool, people who truly understand the program and are really committed to their time who tend to judge the semifinals, the finals. We have up to 30 judges that come in um, and score. So you, uh, the reason we do that is, like I just said, the variety of projects, industries, majors, focuses is vast. So we bring in to, up to 30 judges for the finals because we need to have people from every industry, from every background. So you're pitching to people who truly understand what you're doing. 
Um, and that's how we, that's how the in majority finals are, are judged. Um, part of the fun is that the judges walk around and you don't always know they're a judge. <laughs> so you're just doing your pitch over and over and getting a really good experience with that. No pressure. Trust me, by the time you make it to the finals, you just like, the pitches just, they roll off. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the state side of the uh, the what is considered a tangible product thing has always been our question because there's a lot of computer science and things that are involved in that. Uh, but yeah, they they have a physical they have a physical manifestation, but they're also now so absolutely. Um and that has changed, uh, especially after uh, 2020, as the, the rules loosened up a bit. It used to be you had to be working on physical innovation only. Um, uh, in 2022, uh, the fourth place team was Cortava. They were working on uh, a, a neural net device, but the, what they were truly working on was the app. It was a way to measure the impulses, the stress, and responses on it. We were happy to have that. Um, there's so many things that are getting worked on that are using AI technology or needing those uh, accessibility points with apps. We want to see that, bring that on, but it does need to have something that lives in the physical world. Um, and so strictly app-based technologies don't qualify, but anything that has a, another component that interacts in the physical world. And sometimes, honestly, if it's something that we're not sure about, we sit down and talk about it, and my goal is to, to say yes. So <laughs> um, that's what we're always striving to do is uh, is to say yes. A couple of years ago, there was a, a, a gentleman out of um, uh, SOU who he had a great idea for an app that would help you shop for socks depending on your foot. So it was this like it scans your foot and it helps you shop for socks so you get the perfect sock for you. And I was like, I love that for you, but let's make socks. Let's actually make socks. So by the end, he figured out that he was using like the Nike uh, sock technology to be able to fit custom socks to support athletes with injuries. Um, and that's a huge thing because colored athletes do not get the same amount of support as professional athletes, but they are expected to perform at the same level. So he was like, hey, what if we can make custom socks for somebody who has high arch or really hurt their toe at one point? Uh, and like we provided him with that support and push and network to make his first pair of socks. And yeah, he's still running with it. So sometimes you come to us without a physical idea. Find one, <laughs> for sure. What else? I'd love to, uh, I'd love to stick around for a little while if people are, they have an idea and you're like, hey, have you ever seen this? Um, I know there's some other folks in the community here that um, might also be of help. Uh, to be able, if you're working on something, have an idea. I mean, that's where all of this starts. Everything starts with an idea. Or a, I just want to try this. Um, and I want you to try it too. Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming. We definitely appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>